Hi. We all know that the Fed and other central banks have been engaging in highly accommodative monetary policy for some time. Now, the hard money inflationista Austrian crowd has been screaming about this nonstop from day one, saying it's going to bring on inflation, if not hyperinflation, and cause the dollar to collapse. Of course, none of this has happened, but they say that one day, one day it will. It's just a matter of time. It's coming, really, don't worry. Me, personally, I'm not going to hold my breath. Now, I've been over the actual mechanics of Fed monetary operations and quantitative easing several times, and by now, most of you should understand that it's nothing more than an asset swap. When the Fed conducts QE, it removes one asset from the economy and replaces it with another. The net amount of financial assets has not changed. In other words, no new money has been created. This is what the inflationistas can't seem to understand, but that's good because it means we can take their money by going against their trades. Now, some of the more astute inflationistas understand the distinction between monetary operations conducted by the central bank, like quantitative easing, and actual government deficit spending. Where the former is not money printing, the latter is. When the government spends more than it confiscates from us in the form of taxes, it can be said to be printing money. New financial assets are created that did not exist before. The supply of money has gone up. Now, I've left out bank credit for now, which can also be considered a form of money because I don't, I, I want to stick with the concept of government money printing because that's what the inflationistas are so crazy about. So, as I was saying, the inflationistas look at government deficit spending as money printing, which it is, and they say that this will create inflation. It has to. And to prove their case, some of the more smart alecky inflationistas roll out the MV equals PQ identity, otherwise known as the quantity theory of money. What is the quantity theory of money, you ask? Well, it's the concept that there is a direct relationship between the quantity of money in the economy and the level of prices of goods and services. Now, this was a really big deal when Milton Friedman was around. He popularized it and got the Fed going on targeting the money supply, which didn't work at all. And even later on in his life, he said that the whole concept probably had major flaws and he wouldn't follow it anymore as he did back then. But the inflationistas still hang their hat on it, and they rely heavily on this equation, MV equals PQ, where M is the supply of money and V is the velocity, that is how many times the money changes hands in the economy, P is the price level, and Q is the total amount of stuff sold or produced. The inflationistas say that raising the M, or the money supply, will automatically raise the right-hand side of the equation, and that proves that inflation is just around the corner. It has to be. Here, just look at our fancy equation. I'll give you an example. Let's say I go to the store five times today, and I spend $10 each time. If you plug that into the left side of the equation, in other words, V is five. I went five times today. I spent $10, that's the money supply, it tells me that $50 worth of stuff has been sold. If I go uh, six times today and I have $10, then $60 worth of stuff has been sold. Whoopee! These genius inflationistas point to the rising right-hand side of the equation and submit that that's proof of rising prices. Well, what they forget is that there are four parameters in this equation, M, V, P, and Q, none of which are constant. Sure, M could go up, but V, the number of times I go to the store, can go down. I can have more money, but what, what if I have $20 and I go two times? Only $20 worth of stuff has been sold. On the other hand, something on the right-hand side of the equation could change, like the quantity. Maybe we have a bumper crop of something. So the output is much greater, and maybe prices actually fall in that instance. And we could even see the money supply go up, yet prices 
have fallen. In other words, this equation tells you nothing other than the total amount of money spent equals the total amount of nominal output. It can give no prediction or axiom about money and price. In fact, we see this happening right now. We have big money printing with record deficits and prices are stable to falling. Why? Because the velocity is low. People are just not spending money. And the quantity is high. You have excess capacity and excess labor. And you know what? The more money the government prints, the, the further prices could fall if people don't feel like spending. So all of you inflationistas out there, I'm afraid your little equation is not going to work. You're going to have to find something else. Good luck to you. But for now, I'll just keep betting against your clueless calls. Well, that's it. This is Mike Norman saying bye-bye. I'll see you next time.